This is Heart Rhythm TV. Welcome back to the Ice Image of the Month. This is Dan Aliesh from Denver, Colorado. Our goal with the Ice Image of the Month is to disseminate advanced ice imaging techniques. We are joined again by Dr. Hani Dima uh, of Swedish Hospital North Shore University Health. Thank you for um, joining us for episode two. Thank you for having me, Dan. Um, you know, Dr. Dima did his ice ice baby shimmy already, but we didn't turn the camera on in time. So that, <laughs> we'll have to wait for another episode. Um, so uh, to recap what we went over last time, okay, putting the, the ice catheter in the left atrium without fluoroscopy, the anatomic landmarks of the left atrium, uh, cryoballoon uh, ablation guided by left-sided ice, and then RF, high power short duration, as well as a pathway. Today now we'll focus on the left ventricle. Okay, um, and so let me cue up our first video and our first question for Dr. Dima. Okay, so our first image and question. Now you're in the left atrium advancing the ice catheter into the left ventral. Can you talk us through your catheter manipulation, please? Uh, yeah, sure. So, you know, to, to advance the catheter from any chamber to another, we usually apply an anterior tilt. And what an anterior tilt will do will basically bring the tip of the catheter into the chamber that you would like to advance your catheter to. And once you are into this chamber, you release that tilt because now you have a straight catheter. So you don't kind of, you don't buckle pretty much. So with the ice catheter already in the left atrium, um, I usually get the mitral valve in view and try to obtain a view where there is a symmetrical opening and closure of the mitral valve. And when I apply an anterior tilt, that will bring me uh, uh, parallel to the opening or to the uh, uh, opening of the mitral valve, safely advance my eyes into the left ventricle. Similar to what we do by advancing, uh, when we try to advance the eyes into the RV uh, at baseline to make sure there is no effusion. Absolutely, and I think for those that aren't used to using ice without fluoroscopy. Again, to orient yourself, right? You have anterior here, you have the mitral valve here. You wanna, you wanna orient your catheter so you have the mitral valve in front of anterior, anterior tilt, so that it'll go down into the valve. Okay, and that's- Exactly, exactly. And you have to see the valve opening and closing. So this way you're not going through a leaflet of the valve, you're actually going through the opening of the valve. Yeah, and then, so you're down and then you release and then you're atraumatic and, and not buckling. So, correct. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, so now we have our next image here where you're using um, left side ice to guide a papillary muscle PVC ablation. And I'll let you talk through kind of what you're seeing and what you're doing, what you're thinking in real time. Sure. So, uh, that was a posterior medial papillary muscle. And uh, uh, you know, the, the, when we went into the uh, lateral part of the of the uh, papillary muscle, I could get suppression, but I could not completely get rid of the PVCs. So I I was able to visualize in ice how I can maneuver my ablation catheter into the other side of the of the papillary muscle. I, I said, okay, if I cannot get suppression from here, and I, I had a small R wave on the uh, uh, unipole, maybe it's coming from the other side of the papillary muscle. So I moved my catheter there. And again, you can see the, the characteristic changes on the tissue while you're applying RF. You know that your lesions uh, are uh, efficient lesions, especially when you combine this with the information you get from uh, impedance drop. Um, and again, on the, on the other side of the papillary muscle, we got suppression, but in the waiting period, we got the PVCs back. So eventually I had to go slightly deeper to the base of the papillary muscle. And that's when we uh, got uh, complete, we, we got rid of the PVC, it was completely gone. So I think uh, that this is a, a great example of how, you know, papillary muscles are complex structures and sometimes need to go triangulate from another side and that's not necessarily evident on the electroanatomic map. I have a question for you. Do you use a multipolar catheter to map or are you mapping with an ablator? I use a multipolar. I, uh, I use the HD grid uh, uh, to map, yes. Okay, fantastic. All right, so move to our next image. So our last image here is from the Undisputed Ice King. Thank you, Dr. Razminia, for um, you know, an example of left-sided ice guidance. Um, so I'm gonna start, I'll hit play here. Um, 
So again, he talks about or advancing the ice catheter into the left atrium with the techniques we described, mitral valve and view, anterior tilt. Um, and then this is an example of, you know, complex anatomy on the left side here and how actually going into a crevice gets you very close to the epicardium. And he was not able to visualize this with his right-sided eyes. And so left-sided eyes greatly assisted him in this circumstance. Dr. Dima, have you come across this issue where you can see more complex structures, clear image with left-sided eyes like this? Oh, absolutely, then, yeah. All, all the time, whenever we do uh, uh, ventricular tachycardia uh, ablation, especially when, when you know, for, for ischemic cardiomyopathy, and you, you can really appreciate uh, the scarring in the left ventric, and, and you can tell the areas that are thinner or the area of thinning and the area that you really need to be careful so you don't cause any perforation, just like the example that Dr. Asminia provided here. Uh, a lot of these things you, you cannot fully appreciate with the eyes from the, the RV, uh, and you wouldn't really get a, a clearer picture unless your eyes in the left ventricle, uh, and you can visualize it in, in a much superior way. So this uh, example here is uh, Dr. Resmenia now is inverting his image yes. for left-sided views. Exactly. So this is something that neither of us do uh, habitually. <laughs> I think this is a, a pen, um, you know, a pen practice, and at the same time. You know, as a Michigan trainee, um, you know, I, I never did this. I never understood why, but um, uh, it hurt my brain. But actually, what I learned here is, and I'm going to pause for a second. Dr. Asmina comments that when you invert the image here, um, now you get a view similar to the peristernal long axis. where You have a posterior wall here. You have the, uh, you have the papillary muscle here, and you have the mitral valve up here. You can get the alpha tract up here. So actually... You know, maybe, maybe I need to rethink how I do this, although truthfully, I, and now I'm so habitually not flipping the ice that I may not end up doing this. But um, a nice example. And also, again, another example of no septum in the view so that you have a clear image and a papillary muscle um, PC ablation. And Dr. Deem, I want to actually have you come. Have you flipped the ice like this and have you tried it? Uh, I tried it and, you know, Dr. Rosminia loves flipping the ice and, and it does look like a peristernal uh, uh, long axis, uh, which we're all so used to. But, you know, in, in the EP lab, as, as you said, it does hurt my brain a little bit to flip it because my, my ice catheter, my ice images in, in my brain uh, not flipped. So it's going to be, it's hard for me. It's really hard. Absolutely. And so he shows again a nice example of eliminating the PVC in real time watching your catheter tip um, contact with ice and watching your lesion uh, with ice. Uh, I guess the final question I wanted to ask you, so are, for all your left-sided ablation cases, are you using left-sided ice as well too for the, for the left ventricle? Yes, yes. Uh, for all left-sided ab ablation, atrial or, or uh, ventricular, the ice is gonna be on the left side. And it depends for the atrium, for atrial ablation, the ice will always be in the atrium, of course. For ventricular ablation, it depends which part we're ablating. So sometimes the ice will be in the LV or sometimes it will be in the LA closer to the mitral valve. Uh, the one thing I, I'd like to comment is advancing the ice in the left atrium is feasible and it's safe. If you follow the, uh, uh, that you're basically going into the left area, uh, atrium parallel to a catheter or a wire. And if you're also following the rules where the proximal and distal tip of your ice catheter, you have an understanding of where the proximal and the distal tip of the ice catheter uh, are, uh, as the dots will show here on the image that you have, you know, the proximal and distal. And, and as long as you're leading with an echo-free space, uh, then you are safe to, to manipulate your ice catheter. Absolutely. And I think that and this is one thing, one thing I just noticed about this video is Dr. Resminia puts it in the left ventricle with it in my quote unquote normal configuration for me. And then he flips it once he's in. I mean, some real uh, ninja moves there, but I, I, guess, <laughs> I guess I can understand why he does it. Um, and then my other question and actually uh, final question is, so you have, you know, in the left atrium, you have three catheters, one being an ice catheter. In the left ventricle, maybe you're I'm not sure if you're doing double double access or a single access, but you know, with the extra catheter in your ablating chamber, kind of what's the learning curve for you know catheter interaction and manipulation, et cetera? 
Yeah, that's a that's an excellent question. Of course, the more you have, the more you're gonna uh, um, encounter, you know, interactions. Uh, usually, for the, the the ventricular, I have only one catheter. Uh, it becomes more of a, a, I wouldn't say an issue, or it will become becomes more of uh, a learning curve when you have two catheters in the atrium for an RF. So you have a mapping catheter and you have an RF catheter and then you have the ice catheter. Uh, basically, a lot of times, all I need to do is just make sure everything is neutral. And if, if my catheter, I can't see because my ice catheter is right on top of the catheter, I'm just gonna flip it 360 degrees to get rid of the shadow artifact. And slight, you know, uh, withdraw or advancement it will remove, you know, the catheters are in the way of each other, especially if there is a mapping catheter in the way of my ice catheter and I cannot see. So there is a learning curve to it. Uh, the, the learning curve, it, you know, you, it's, it's not, uh, uh, it's not bad at all. All right. Well, well, thank you very much. You know, I think that your, your point and your argument is left-sided ice helps you see, see things more clearly, improves safety. And Absolutely. the learning curve is not that steep. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much. And, uh, you know, uh, I appreciate you contributing to the Ice Image of the Month, and we look forward to future episodes. Thank you, Dan. Thank you for inviting me. Take care.